There are several books out there that talk about our habit and the thoughts and feelings that lead to us engaging in our habit as the enemy. So I see this particularly in binge eating, which is something that I help people find freedom from all the time. But I think it's true with other habits and addictions. They're really all the same. They'll call it the pig or the beast or, I don't know, the saboteur, the, the inner mean girl. You know, there are all these different ways that we can come to see the habit, the thoughts and the feelings that are all wrapped up in the habit and we kind of give them a name. And I think there's a lot of value in some of that. And here's why. It is enormously helpful for people to start to see that there is a stable us. There is an us that is healthy and habit-free. And there is moving, changing, fleeting experience that moves through us all the time. So before we know that, when, when we don't really see that, we're feeling stuff, we're thinking stuff, we're feeling stuff, we're doing stuff, and we think it's us. And I see so much, I know anyone who works with people in this space sees so much shame and heaviness and confusion, and it looks so big and complicated. Why am I doing this? I remember feeling that, asking that all the time. I know better. Why do I keep doing this? I know better. Why do I keep doing this? And then we get into our theories. Do I hate myself? Am I self-sabotaging? Am I really that damaged? You know, and we can just get so caught up in all of those things. So I think, you know, for us to be at a place and helping people with habits and addictions and eating disorders, to be able to see, no, that's not you. That's not you. You're the wise part that can watch it and see it happening. This is just this other thing over here. And to even give it a name, super, super helpful. It is led to many insights for many, many people, including myself. So I think that's awesome. And I think it's really important to remember that it's a metaphor. And when we start to attach details to that persona that we're making up, you know, for the sake of this metaphor, and we make it sound like a bad thing, the enemy, the saboteur, the beast, the pig, I think that starts to lead us astray. And I just want to talk about that a little bit here. So here's how I see how our human experience works. We are completely habit-free, healthy, full of clarity and common sense and wisdom and all good things. We are incredibly resilient. That is who every single person on earth is by default, no exceptions, no matter what. And We've given, been given this amazing gift of thought where we're constantly thinking, thoughts moving through us, and we're feeling that. And we can get very, very easily caught up in that. So part of this amazing gift of thought that's brought to life within us in such a realistic way is that we, we misidentify with it. We think we're those thoughts and we're those feelings. And again, like we said earlier, separating that out and saying, no, you're the healthy part you're the wise part. And then there's some stuff that shows up, temporary, fleeting, moving through stuff that shows up, that creates this habit for you, but that's not you. Super, super helpful. But here's where it starts to change. No. So here's my understanding of how our human experience works. We are, every one of us, 100% habit-free, healthy, resilient, full of common sense, peaceful, all of that by default. And we have this ability to experience all kinds of life. So thought moves through us. It brings feeling with it. And we have these huge ups and downs in this amazing, vivid changing, temporary human experience that's always moving through, that doesn't touch who we are. That home base that is who we are is always there. Yeah. But because thought and feeling and all of this is brought to life in such a vivid way, which is awesome, it's a huge gift we've been given in our design to experience life that way. Part of that, you know, the flip side of that, because it's brought to life in such a big way, means we get very caught up in it we misidentify with it. We think it's us. And we start to feel like we've lost our sense of home base, like we've lost who we are. And we get, we 
get really caught up in that moving, changing experience, which is all over the board. It isn't always pleasant. Now, because who we all are by nature, and we can't ever change that, that never changes, is that calm, peaceful, resilient, habit-free place. That's our home base. When we're caught up in the thoughts and feelings that are there and we're identified with them and we're thinking that's us and that's our lives, it doesn't feel good. And that's by design too. It doesn't feel good because it's showing us, no, you're caught up in moving, changing, fleeting stuff. Home base is still there. Don't mistake that for who you are. So, so we don't feel well and there's something in us, every single human being, has something in them that wants to help us move closer to home base. So from our thinking that's there, we look outside of ourselves because we forget. We forget that home base is in there. Every one of us does. So we look outside of ourselves and we pull things in and we add things and we do things to try to feel better. And sometimes they work for a short time, like binge eating if that's your habit, or shopping, or gambling, or whatever your habit might be. And we have this brain that is this amazing computer and it remembers when we feel a little better it remembers now our brain is just a, a machine you know it's a really amazing machine but it's a machine so it remembers ooh this felt better you know it kind of got some punch from some behavior some substance whatever it might be but it isn't wise enough to kind of see the big picture it just kind of remembers what gave it its little punch, you know, and it, and it kind of holds on to that. It's all good. Everything our brain is doing when we have a habit is well-intentioned. It's just that it's a computer. So, you know, it's going to have its limitations. But there's nothing enemy-like in it. It is completely well-meaning. It is all about us being so darn healthy and so darn okay that we'll do anything to get back there because we know it's there. And then having this amazing machine that remembers things, that plays out patterns, that develops habits that keep us alive. And the wire's getting crossed a little bit, you know? It's like, ooh, do this again. That helped last time. And we, in hindsight and in wisdom and from a clear mind, can see, oh, I don't need that. But in the moment, we can't always see that. So we do what we do. We feel a little bit better, and then we feel a lot worse because we thought, oh great, I did my habit again. And that's kind of how that works. But you kind of get a sense for how it seems really inaccurate to call that part of our brain, even our habits, even to call your habit a pig or a beast or anything that has a bad intention to it because it isn't at all. It's 100% well-meaning and just trying to help you get closer to home base. And here's the real important part. Now we could argue about accuracy all day long and that's not really the important part. The important part is what happens when we start thinking of our habits and our thoughts and feelings as pigs and beasts. When we start thinking of it as the enemy. What happens is naturally that doesn't feel good. <laughs> That's not very calm and relaxing and it doesn't feel very healthy to think that you have a pig or a beast or a saboteur within you that's gonna come get you at any moment. So naturally, we start thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I need to be on guard and when is it coming and what am I gonna do? How do I outsmart it? How do I beat it? How can I fight it? Where am I gonna find the willpower I need to fight this pig? Where am I going to find the discipline I need, you know, to beat down this monster that's coming for me? And we start again, looking outside, pulling in strategies, pulling in behaviors, pulling on effort, which is really hard to come by when you're caught up in urges and cravings. And we think, you know, that just looks like that's the thing we need. That's the best shot we have to fight this thing. But Here's the kicker, when we're trying to fight something that, again, is a metaphor, it's, it's thought and feeling within us. Obviously, there's no more a pig or a beast within us as there is a best friend or a guide or, you know, however I might talk about it. It's all a metaphor. But when we're thinking of it as this enemy, in a sense, as a monster, in a sense, it changes things for us and we start paying a lot of attention to it and 
our whole approach naturally becomes a little different. We're trying to beat it. We're trying to outsmart it. And what that actually does, because it's just moving through fleeting thought and feeling that's actually safe, not only safe, but trying to help you. We look at it as an enemy. We put all this attention on it and we end up magnifying it. We end up fueling it. It gets bigger. Now it's still going to pass because thought and feeling moves through us. We can't make it stay there if we wanted to. Every single experience we have as human beings is in motion, is moving through, and they don't touch who we are as people. But we're not doing ourselves any favors by fueling it and thinking of it as an enemy, you know? So the more we can understand it and see, no, it's not a pig or a beast or a monster. It's actually a really, really helpful guidance system. It's part of the intelligence in the design of all human beings. It's there to show us, hey, you're getting caught up in something that's superficial and fleeting, thinking that's you. You're feeling really bad and you're thinking harder and that's making it worse. Take a step back from that. That's what that bad feeling is there to show us. That's what reaching for our habit is there to show us. Oh, I'm going off track. It's like the rumble strips on the side of the highway. Oh, I'm going off track. Let me stop and let this settle down. And when this settles down, we touch that place before all our habitual thinking, before those painful feelings, before the anxiety, before all the fighting and resistance. And in that place, we're okay. We're at home base. We're closer to home base anyway. And there's no need to grab something outside of us and add more and do all of these things to try to feel better because we already feel better. That's where we're habit free in that place. So the more we can start to see, wow, there's a really wonderful, intelligent design here. And my thoughts and feelings that don't feel well, my reaching for my habit that doesn't feel great, that's a really helpful sign. It's a guidepost. It's like your best friend showing you, hey, you're just caught up in your thinking. And the more we get to just naturally gravitate back toward home base and feel what's there for us, and it's there for every single one of us, no exceptions, all the time, we start to take our thinking and our feelings a little less seriously. We feel a little safer in all that happens. And it's a really different thing to start to find freedom from a habit. See, that's where freedom comes from. That's where deep, lasting change and freedom comes from, is seeing that there's nothing to be afraid of. It's not as big and bad and scary and monster-like and beast-like as it might look or feel. We've just misunderstood it innocently. We've all innocently misunderstood our experience. But when we can start to feel safe in it, it just moves through us then we don't have to call it bad names. Again, there's a lot of value in seeing that we are in our experience, but we don't have to call it bad names and we don't have to bring, live with all the fear that comes up with that and the resistance and the urge to fight and do more. Adding action, behavior, tools, strategies, those are not gonna help you long-term find freedom from a habit. That's just more doing. Relaxing and seeing that we're okay and letting the way that nature has designed us, you know, the intelligence and the design take over. That's how we don't need willpower. And that's how when we do start to change, we see life differently. So our change is deep and lasting. Very, very different than calling it names and fighting against it. So I really hope that this sheds a little bit of light on it, maybe just widens the picture of what's going on when we have these habits and this pain and suffering that all people experience. And if you're interested in this understanding and want to hear more about it, it really has helped so many people with binge eating and so many other habits find real peaceful freedom, you know, no fighting, no resistance, just peaceful freedom from, from this innocent misunderstanding we're caught up in. You can check out my book, The Little Book of Big Change, um, you can check out my online school, which is an awesome, awesome community, The Little School of Big Change at thelittleschoolofbigchange.com. And I really hope it's helpful.